Hi, this is Coach Dan, and I'm here to show you how to hit the best serve you possibly can. This segment is sponsored by Own the Zone, makers of the popular OTZ band vibration dampener. I've developed this easy method for learning the serve during my 30-year teaching career for both beginners and advanced players, adults and children. And I've even used it to improve the serve of a couple players on the Pro Tour who wanted to increase their service power. Let me take you through my four-step process to a better serve. First, we're going to focus on the way to generate the most arm speed possible without putting you in the hospital. All you need to do is understand how to throw a ball. I grew up playing baseball, and the throwing motion is the most natural there is for generating arm speed. Here I am throwing the ball with my buddy Ron. Ron and I play on the same softball team together. Hey, Ron. Hey, Dan. Ron, could you call me Coach Dan just for now? Sure, Dan. If you don't have a softball buddy like Ron around, just throw a tennis ball against the wall. Hey, Wall. Hey, Dan. If you're having trouble with the throwing motion, let me give you a tip. In baseball, they use the snake and spaghetti method of teaching the throw. Here, your arm looks like a snake. And when you bring your arm around, it should be loose like spaghetti. If you have trouble remembering this, picture a snake eating some spaghetti. The important thing in throwing the ball is that your shoulder, elbow, and especially the wrist are all working together to generate arm speed. After you've warmed up a little, try and throw the ball a little harder. Where does the extra speed come from? It comes from the wrist. Now that your arm is loosened up and you have the throwing motion down, let's pick up the racket. We're ready for step two. Always make sure your arm is loosened up well before you serve. So many times I've seen beginner tournament players try to hit the hardest serve they can when they begin warming up in front of an opponent. The only person that benefits from this is your orthopedist. Loosen yourself up first and save your hard serves for the game. Hey Ron, you want to get in on this? Well, I'm not really a tennis player. Well, that's okay. It'll make me look good if I turn you into a big server on YouTube in under 10 minutes. Cool. So we're picking up the racket, and without the ball, using the same throwing motion. Just don't throw the racket, okay? Try and listen for the racket whoosh of air when you're making this motion. The higher pitch the whoosh, the more racket speed is generated, and the more power you're getting from your wrist. That's good, Ron. Try it again. There you go. Now we're ready for step three. Take a ball and throw it up on the right side of the body if you're a right-handed player, and on the left side of the body if you're a left-handed player. Make sure the ball is in front of the body and you hit the ball at the top of the toss. But for now, we're only throwing the ball head high. This is where I usually say to the advanced players, don't try to hit your normal serve. Just hit the ball using the throwing motion and don't worry about where it's going. Why do I say that? Because naturally the advanced player has his or her idea what the serve is and starts making all these contortions that make their serve a disaster. You get the most effective action possible out of your arm using the throwing motion. So don't get carried away with hitting your old serve. I say throw the ball low, just about head height, and hit the ball like this, hard. Want to give it a try? Here you go. Just let that, just let that wrist uh, loosen up. And a little, yeah, and a little further out. Great. 
Coach Dan, how should I hold the racket? Glad you asked, Ron. Hold the racket in the handshake grip, and when we get to the spin serve, we'll move slightly over to the continental, moving the racket just a little bit to the left side. You want the V of your hand on this bevel, just like that. I want your feet shoulder width apart, and I like to draw a line from the back foot to the front foot into the box that you're trying to serve to. The most important thing is that you're on balance when you hit the ball. We've completed step three, but let's review before the last step. The throwing motion, throwing motion with the racket, Throwing motion with the racket and toss the ball head high. And for the last step, all we have to do is throw the ball a little higher. The higher you throw the ball, the more leverage you have to hit down into the court. Keep the ball slightly to the right side. And you want to see that it will bounce in front of you about a foot into the court. Now here's my tip on the ball toss. Make sure that the left arm, the tossing arm, is simply going straight up and down, not moving in a circle. Don't let the ball roll off of your fingers, but try to release the fingers all together so you keep control of the ball. Don't worry about your feet right now. Let's focus on the hit. Gradually toss the ball higher and higher until you reach as high as you can. Most pro players even come off the ground, hitting the ball about four inches in the air. If you focus on your arm speed, the legs will follow to support you. So how's it going, Ron? Hit the ball at the top of the toss, and make sure you stay in back of the baseline until you make hitting contact. Go ahead and try. Arms up together and just, just throw it like you're throwing the racket at the ball. There you go. Nice. Now we have the right speed on the serve. All we need to do is get the ball in the court. Let me show you how. If we move the hand slightly to the continental grip, we're now hitting the ball with the same speed, but spinning it by hitting around the side of the ball. It's the same throwing motion that we're using. We're just hitting the ball at a different angle. I use this serve all the time because I have more control over where the ball is going. Spin equals control. So how do I move the ball around inside the box and not let the opponent see the same serve each time? I slightly adjust my shoulders and my stance. If my shoulders are facing this way, the ball is going to go down the middle of the court. If my shoulders are facing this way, the ball is going to go off to the side. If you want more great instructions on the serve, go to www.otzsports.com and own the zone. Look for my other YouTube videos on the volley and great doubles tactics coming soon. Say goodbye, Ron. Goodbye, Coach Dan. No, goodbye to the people watching this. Bye-bye. And I'm really a much better golfer than tennis player.